Hello everyone, this is Lisa Mendoza and I'm here with a storage hack for your Catherine Puller mini ink pads. So I have looked high and low, up, down, side to side, everywhere for a storage option for Catherine Puller mini ink pads and I just have not found anything. So if you are a business that makes um, you know, these calyx organizational um, things that you, that you can put into your calyx, excuse me. Um, you know, you have a CNC router and you do these things and or even a 3D printer or whatever. We really need Catherine Puller mini ink pad storage. <laughs> anyway, so for now, until someone comes up with something else, because I even scoured YouTube and I can't seem to find anything. I mean, I found some people are storing them in... Um, uh, totally Tiffany soft pouches, but I didn't want something soft. I wanted like a display. Um, also, I was previously storing these in my slim iris cases, um, and it actually worked really, really, really good. However, they were not on display. They were in three different iris cases, um, but they did fit really nice, to be honest, the slim ones. But anyway, so this is what I came up with. So I thought I would share it with you and I would walk you through um, how um, I MacGyvered this. So this is a Totally Tiffany. I'll show you the packaging. This is a um, um, Totally Tiffany <laughs> four level stadium supply, four level craft supply stadium. And it's like this. Okay, so it's like this. It's like this, you can see it here. And so what I do, or what I did, is in the back there's some hanging um, hardware, so I removed that. And then I flipped it on its back. So we're gonna go ahead and do this right now. So now you can see um, how I used it. So it's flipped on its back, and now I have these four sections, okay? And then what I did is I purchased some basswood. This is from Joann's. Um, so there's the barcode and the dimensions. Um, and I trimmed the length only to 14.25 inches, okay? So that it would fit, as you can see, it will fit um, in there, okay? But we're gonna elevate it. So. Again, I cut these 14.25. Um, My husband cut them all at once. He taped them all together and then cut them all at once. Okay, so we have that now. So we need to elevate that. So with the scraps, after we trimmed the, the length down to 14.25, um, we made these. And this is what I put on each side. This is reverse, but imagine this on top of it. So I put that on each side. You can see them here in order to hold that up. And I just glue gunned that into place. Now, ideally, you'll wanna paint that white before you do this whole thing, but really I was wondering if it was gonna work and so I didn't bother painting it, but I will go back and paint it later. So anyway, um, you're gonna um, glue gun that to each side, excuse me, and then put a little bit of um, glue um, on this piece and then place it on top. Okay, and then that's going to be set and then you're still going to have to do one more step. So let's see if I can hold this and do this at the same time. So I'm just going to take this off. My glue gun is ready to go, but I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and make these shelves. Now, because I have one that's full, um, I don't need to do all four shelves necessarily. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe... The top two, uh, I'm just going to do this top row. I'm going to make a double decker just on this top row. So I'm going to show you how I do that, okay? And then the rest I'm going to leave open for now because I may put some other craft supplies or even some decor or something because Catherine Puller doesn't have that many inks. I mean, she has a lot, as you can see, <laughs> but um, not that many. Okay, so I'm just going to put this on its side just like this, okay? And let me grab... It. Okay, so I don't have anything to cover my ugly thumb, but it looks a lot better. Um, I had a hand injury and anyway. Okay, so what I'm going to do is right here um, towards this bottom, I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue. 
like that, just in that little corner, sorry. And then I'm gonna take this little thing that we made and I'm just gonna slide it there just like that, okay? And then I would do this one and I would do this one and I would do this one. But since I'm only gonna do this top one, we're only gonna do that, so we're gonna flip this. Okay, so we're looking at it like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna print, um, put a little bit of glue right here. Sorry if you can't see. Okay, and then I'm gonna take another piece and I'm gonna place it right here, just like that, okay? And then again, like I mentioned, you would do this one and this one and this one, all on the left, okay? So then when I flip this back the way I want it, then I have it like this, you can see that. And then I'm gonna take this piece, okay, the 14.25 long, and I'm just gonna place a little bit of glue right here Okay, just like that. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, just a little bit of glue, not a whole lot. And I have some Q-tips on standby for cleanup. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna set it in here and set it right on top, just like that, okay? And that just makes this little shelf. Okay, so um, I, don't, I don't, I'm looking in there and I don't really need much cleanup. Ooh, it's pretty neat. So otherwise I would take a Q-tip and I would just kind of clean in there any excess because you don't want that, right? So that's all you're gonna do. You're just, um, instead of this being um, a four-tiered stadium, we're gonna make it an eight-tiered stadium, okay? So it will hold um, eight rows of inks and it holds eight across this way, okay? All right, so that's that. So once you have that, you're pretty good to go, but not quite yet. So then I took some craft foam, okay? And this is um, the, we need 14 and a quarter to go across again, right? Because this is gonna end up going right in here on the bottom shelf so that we can have our inks cascading the way they are. If you don't do this, then the two inks that you put in this one cubby are gonna be at the same um, uh, depth. And I'll show you what I mean. I mean like that and like this. It's gonna go in and it's gonna be the same depth, just like that. However, I wanted mine tiered like this. And so that being said, when I put this piece of craft foam and I glue it back there, it acts as a stopper and it does that. Okay, as you can see here. Okay, I just thought that was a nice little added touch and it also helps me get the inks in, in and out quicker. So as you can see, I can grab the ink pretty easy out of each one. Okay, if you have them like this and you have inks side by side and you have it go all the way in like this, okay, just imagine we have one on this side. One. It is hard to get this one out. This one, yeah, you can kind of grab it from the top and take it out, but this one, it's, it's gonna be really hard to take out if you don't create this um, spacer in the back. Okay, and also it just looks prettier when it's sticking out a little bit like that and you can see all the colors. <laughs> okay, so now this craft foam, I believe it comes eight and a half by 11, so I couldn't get the four and a quarter all the way across. So that's why I have that shorter one and then I have one here to fill in that gap. Anyway, it's not glued down, but we're gonna glue it down right now. Um, that fits in that gap and then that fills up the 14.25 length. Write okay. all the measurements down for you. Okay, so to do this this part, to adhere this part, I didn't use my glue gun. I used my um, ATG tape and I just, I'm gonna see if we can do this with one hand and I can. Oops, but I gotta show it on camera. Sorry guys. So I just put some ATG tape And then like I that. just placed this in here like this and then pressed down. Get it over all the way on the left, and we're just gonna press down just like that. We're gonna do the same thing to this little guy. Okay. And then we're gonna put 
this in here. And we're going to put it all the way back, flush, and we're going to press down. And that is all you're going to do. So it's actually very simple. Okay. Um, I think the hardest part was, okay, husband, I need for you to trim this wood for me. <laughs> Right, having him get go to the garage, get the saw, you know, set it up. Okay, how long do you want it? You know, that type of thing. Okay, so now that that is there, now when I put these inks like this, okay, it's going to stop right there and it's going to create this cascade just like this. How pretty does that look? So, and I may even add labels to, um, to right here. I might even, I don't know. I don't know. I can kind of, I can kind of read it. But anyway, so I'm just going to do this one row because I have um, just a, um, a couple of inks left that I have to store. So I wasn't able to fit these in here. Um, so I'm going to have two more rows. So that's 16. That allows for 16 more inks. And I have, I believe, nine. Um, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm sorry. I have 11. And then I eventually want to buy the grays that they're bringing out. Um, but I want to, I want the minis, so I have to wait for that. But anyway, so I think just this one row um, for 16 of them is going to be just fine. And then I'll figure out what I'm going to do with these other rows. I wish this was just one more higher. It would have been just fine. Anyway, so that is that. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I will be sure to put some dimensions down for you. But it, it was very easy. Very easy. You can see I did it with one hand. <laughs> All right, you guys, I will talk to you really soon. Happy organizing and happy crafting.